We already know that certain things are good for you and certain things are bad for you. And in the past, a lot of scientists have believed that pouring people with information, so giving you more information about something will likely change your behavior. And um, along the way, we found out that that's not the case. My name is Sanju Grace Ahn, and I have been studying virtual reality and its pro-social effects since um, the year 2006. Communication technology has really changed the way that we uh, communicate and deliver messages. I think it's opening a new horizon on how we can deal with problems that have plagued uh, society for centuries. The most recent ones being obesity issues and environmental problems. For a lot of these health consequences, your present day health behaviors seem pretty benign. Having a sweet iced tea over lunch doesn't seem like it's a bad thing. But over time, these are the things that add up to excess calories. What we found is that personal experiences go a very long way in changing your behavior. And so with a lot of these risk issues, there's a limit as to how you're able to get people to experience becoming obese or having diabetes or having cancer or um, experiencing what the world might look like 100 years down the road. If we're able to build a schema that is realistic enough for you to rely on when you come across a similar uh, situation, then we may be able to change your behavior based on that schema. A change that we see with virtual reality um, versus more traditional platforms is that uh, when you are in virtual reality, you are essentially surrounded by a lot of sensory information. So you're able to see um, and hear and feel as you would in the physical world. And so that sort of tricks your brain into thinking that you may be experiencing this for real as if you were in the physical world and going through that experience at that moment. You are able to do this to a pretty sufficiently realistic level so that you're able to build a memory of this experience. And so people are able to see and hear and feel as if they went through it or they visited that place and we call this perception of presence. We're able to show you what this um, seemingly benign habit added over a few years um, can have in terms of a future negative uh, consequence um, for your health. We're able to create a virtual doppelganger, so I can create an avatar that looks exactly like you um, and show you what happens to the avatar over five years, 10 years down the road in a matter of minutes. And this is very high impact because we're making this uh, about you and not about anyone else. Our findings show that um, after the virtual simulations, people feel um, greater personal relevance. They believe that this can happen very soon in the future. Both of these mechanisms help us uh, change your attitude and behaviors toward the risk issue. Personal health care costs have been rising exponentially in the United States. For every given individual, we are spending tens of thousands of dollars um, to keep this individual healthy. If everyone were to make even slight changes for the better, if they are able to make healthier lifestyle choices, that would drastically, dramatically cut down um, the budget that is needed for keeping everyone healthy um, in, in society. And the same goes for environmental behaviors. If my research is able to contribute to solving these issues, then um, I think that makes all the hours worthwhile.